everyone, it's Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here with a project that I need to do for my drawers, like the IKEA drawers, the uh, supplemental Artemat drawers. So I think probably six to eight months ago, I was in um, Dollar Tree. Oh, sorry about the light. I was in Dollar Tree and I found these. They're called Crafters Square Wood Planks. And I think you get either three, oh, maybe you get six in here. Let's see. Uh, let's open it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, I have to cut it open. I've been thinking about these the last couple days, how to use these, and I figured out a way to use them without spending any more money to make things in the drawers. Now, these planks are not real thick, and I doubt seriously they're completely flat, but that's okay because I don't need them to be. See, this one's a little bowed. This one's flatter. So I bought some yardsticks, and um, a friend sent me a bunch of yardsticks, and I've been cutting them up and using them. So what I'm thinking is that I would like to use a yardstick to do the sides of all of these and maybe one divider in the middle so that I can put stickers or things like this in there. These are lavender spikes that I'm making. I have 350 to make. I think there's 250 in here, so I have 100 more to do. So I can put them in a little compartment and break them down. Um, I can also store things like this, which are those little annoying styrofoam balls that every time my ceiling fan comes on, they wiggle around in here and I'm always having to stack stuff on top of them. Okay, so um, I'm going to go, I think, maybe in the garage and film what I'm going to do with these. But I have two packages of these, so that'll give me, that's two, four, six, it'll give me 12 little sections that I can use to store items in, which I like because, you know, I, I store stuff like this in the drawers that pertain to that specific project. Now, I have this, which I bought at a... Um, place in town where I live that sells lots of cool stuff. So anyway, I bought this at a, um, a place in town and it had, I don't know what that's, veneer, wood veneer on it, and I peeled it all off. And I've been using it in the drawer to, to um, store little things. And I wanted to cut this down, but I think that if I do that, I will ruin this. Um, so I, I just put this in the drawer and put, I had stickers in here because I filled up a book with stickers, so I put different kinds of stickers in here. But this is very big, and the, this is, you know, a much smaller item this way. So I'm going to saw up and stain some yardsticks, which are out in the garage currently, with my husband's Japanese saw, which I really like using because... Everything it cuts is awesome. So I will go out in the garage and cut um, cut the wood for these. And my stain is out in the garage. And I will take photos of the stained wood. I don't know what I'll do anyway. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm out in the garage. And you're going to hear a very weird echo. Um, here's the yardsticks. Here are the planks. And... These are rather thick, so my uh, my space is not going to be as wide as I'd hoped. I don't think I have any more of these um, paint sticks, you know, where I cut off the handles of them to make anything with them. So I am still going to use the art sticks. All right, so I need to measure. Let's see. I need to try to get these a little bit shorter than what will be on the end. I think if I glue these on the outside, it will give me more room. And I think that's the approach I'm gonna do. So let's see what we have here. Let's do the length, let's start at zero. Nope, let's do it from the end. And we will mark it right here. Oh, isn't that nice, there's a line there. Okay.
And I'm just going to put it in my little vice grippy thing here. Oh my goodness, this will take all day to wind this. And this is like my favorite Japanese saw. So it's not exactly straight, but that's okay. It's, I can sand it. Not a big deal. And this will go on the outside of the plank like this. And then I will find two pieces. And I think I will measure this using this. I need to make this more straight. So I'm going to have to sand this down. I don't know if... You know, I think my Dremel with the sanding blade on it will do much better than me trying to cut down this little line right here because that's just silly. So I have this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and find a place to mark it on here because there's a plate, this big line right here that denotes half inch. I'm going to line it up with the part that's cut straight. take this and I know that I'm not going to use the crooked end I'm going to do it right here and this is the line right here where I need to cut let's see Let's get the other side. And again, I will have to smooth out the rough edges on this with the Dremel. So there's my two sides. I'm not going to cut the other corresponding pieces that will go this way until I smooth out these so I know how much I need to cut for this because I'm going to cut from this pencil line across to make it more straight. Not cut, but I'll dremel it and then smooth this out also so that it's better. It looks much nicer and it's not so rough. See, I have a lot of space right here left to, to uh, dremel. You can see that little space right there. So we're going to give it a try. And I'll be back after I Dremel because you don't want to hear the Dremel. Okay, so I filmed the part of using the Dremel to trim my stuff. And um, I'm not very versed on how to use my phone to do that kind of thing. And it did not record it. So I did use the Dremel and the Japanese saw again to, to straighten out my bad cuts. Now I'm going to glue these. And like I said before, when I was out in the garage, I'm going to glue them on the outside of the plank, which will give me probably maybe a little over or around a half an inch extra space. And I've glued one side, and now I'm going to glue the other, and I am using wood glue. Because even though I like art glitter glue, and I like PVA for book stuff, this is really meant for glue, I mean for wood, and so that's what I'm going to use it for. It's not going to take a lot, and it's hard squeezing it through this little thing, but I usually use this for other projects. So One of these is not cut quite exactly to the end, so my cuts here will be good for this and one of them will have a small gap on the end which is no big deal it's going in a drawer and no one knows but us these nice things I saw Nick the booksmith use these and decided I had to have some of those so my husband has some and I have some but this is good for holding it up while it sits sets up with the glue 
and I figured this was easier than trying to set them up and push stuff together in the garage and it looks pretty good. Let me just wipe some of this glue away here. I think this might be, well, yeah, it's already set on that side. It doesn't take very long for the glue to set the wood glue. Uh, I would love to tell you, I think this is called hold tight wood glue. It's not Elmer's wood glue because where I live, when I ran out of wood glue, regular wood glue, we had to go to a local store and they don't carry the Elmer's brand, but this is wood glue. And I use this to glue all my wooden projects for Artemat and other stuff. So this is sufficient for what I need it for. So now we just wait. And the reason I came in the house, I would usually leave this out in the garage, is because the thunder and lightning was really loud in the garage and there'd be no way I could explain to you what these orange things are and why I'm using them. So this is it. And then it's going to dry. And then I'm going to go back out once this is dried and I'm going to cut the two end pieces. And I'm also going to figure out how to get one piece in the middle. I would like to try that. Um, I have lots of yardsticks that come in different shapes. I mean, not the shapes, the different thicknesses. And so I'm going to use them on these. I don't care how random it looks. Matter of fact, I kind of like the way it looks like that. It'll be good. I am going to try to stain this stuff. I don't know how well that's going to go. I've never used these wood planks before. So we'll see. I imagine it will take the wood stain just fine. Okay, next segment will be, hopefully, that I have these two end pieces on here and glued, and then the middle piece, and you'll see the end product. Hey everyone, uh, it's been a couple days since I filmed the other part of the video, and I wanted to show you my results and explain to you what went on. Um, I showed I showed you that I wanted to make a box with this um, with these wood these wood planks from Dollar Tree. So I did. And I had these rulers from Home Depot and I cut them up, glued them, but and I'm going to show you the butt. I right here. I am not good at cutting with the Japanese saw and a vice grip. So I had a kind of a probably a fourth of an inch gap between the end of the long piece and then the short piece that should have met tightly together. So my husband, um, we had to tape the end up and then put wood putty in the hole to, to, to um, shore it up so nothing small would slip out the ends. So we did two sides. We did this side that was a little bit off. And then we did this one, which was way off, but it worked. It sat for a couple days and I let it dry overnight. And then I uh, stained it with some, um, I don't know, some kind of wood stain I had in the garage. I didn't pay anything out of pocket more than what we'd already paid to do these things. So this is, this is what it looked like. It looks like after I stained it and this is what it's for. I make miniature flowers for my Artemat stuff. And I have 350 of these to make. So um, one of these little bowls is not going to cut it. And I needed something larger in the drawer so that I can put them away. And they're all together in the same drawer. Like I explained in another video, I try to put everything for a specific project in the drawer, all the ingredients in there together. And I thought this would be a better way to store the flowers um, than to do little two or three little glass dishes in a drawer so I like this better I want to show you what it looked like before and the difference let's see let's put it this way all right here's one of those wood planks from Dollar Tree and I cut these two the the long pieces and I glued them on I think I need a harder thing here and then my husband showed me how to use the Japanese saw in a better way so that my ends meet like his do. He's not going to have to shore anything up. Although this one's not gluing flat enough. But that's because I cut these. So I'm not going to put any um, wood filler in this one. Because it's bowed. And nothing's going to escape out the end there. But this is what it looked like before it became this. So I just took a little paintbrush and then painted the... Um, stain on it and then I wiped it off with a paper towel because there was places I got a little too liberal.
Imagine that. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the before stain look, and this is the after stain look. And I've got four more in the garage to do. Plus, I have six more right here. So I think I'm going to keep going with this idea, and then I will practice using that Japanese saw and try to get my ends so that they meet a little bit better. I just love this project. It's um, the stuff was already here, except for you know I did buy these wood planks. I don't. I don't know if I've ever seen these again since I bought them originally, but I've had them for eight or nine months, something like that. I've had them a while, and I put them away thinking I would use them, and I hadn't, and then all of a sudden I just was like, you know what? I need some drawer inserts in my drawers, and I'm going to build my own stuff. I have these yardsticks, um, and I'm going to use these because I really like the way they look. And plus, I even like the way they look when they're stained. It is kind of dark, but it looks good. Okay. That's it. I just wanted to show you a DIY project I'm doing for my Artimat drawers to make my life a whole lot simpler. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you get some inspiration out of this. Go and find some yardsticks. Let me tell you though, yardsticks are not cheap. They used to be 50 cents and a dollar. If you can find them, snatch them up. Because the average price at thrift stores where I live, it's four dollars a yardstick. They used to give these things away for free. And now in, in thrift stores, they're charging $4 a yardstick. So if you can find them, snatch them up and make yourself a project with it. Um, there are plastic yardsticks out there. Don't be deceived. They're white and they're plastic. You can use them, but I would prefer the wood ones. But they still cut and they will still work. You just won't be able to stain it, I don't think. You probably could paint over it with regular paint. But I like the dark wood. I like this wood look. So anyway, that's it. I will see you guys next week. Everybody have a good Memorial Day weekend. See you guys after the holiday. Bye.